Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Yep, <laughs> buddy. Um, I got a tough one to do today. We've been doing a series on Montreal Canadiens players that could be traded. Um, we did Petrie. That went over not too bad. Then we did Gallagher, and uh, I sent that out to the Montreal Canadiens fans today, and it hurts. It hurts. There's a lot of one person actually said, "I'll stop being a Canadian fan if they trade Gallagher." He's loved. He's loved. It's so tough. But the one we got to do now, and this is based on an article uh, by Jim Parsons, who used an article by Jonathan Bernier of TVA Sports, who mentioned ten players that could be. It's an in, Jonathan Bernier is an insider for the Montreal Canadiens. 10 players that could be traded by the Montreal Canadiens. And like I said, those two came up. And then, of course, the next one, which is Price. Tough, tough. But we have five teams. This is this was a tough one. Price is, we're going to look at his salary and all of that, but he's making a lot. And it's just tough because these players are so loved in Montreal. Um and doing a rebuild in Montreal is, is, is difficult to begin with. Nobody has more passion for their team than the Montreal Canadiens. There might be some that have as much, but nobody has more. So making trade uh, videos like this and sending it out to Montreal Canadian fans is difficult. It's difficult for me. I'm not even like an actual, I'm not from Montreal. I'm not a Montreal Canadians fan, but I know I can empathize with the idea of having Gallagher on my team and the prospect of losing a warrior like that. Oh, it, it would be tough. It kind of reminds me of when Smith had to leave in Edmonton. It's tough, but we're going to look at it anyways. Five teams that could get Patrick Waugh. First, we'll look at the article, then we'll look at some stats or some stuff on price, and then we'll go to the five teams. All right, here we go. This is the article, the uh, hockey new the uh, hockey writers, uh, Canadians who could be traded. Jonathan Bernier of TVA Sports uh, are these are those to watch if the Canadians choose to undergo a rebuild. Now I've talked about this in the previous videos, but I'll talk about it here. The signing of Je of Gorton who was the general manager of the Rangers, really gives a pretty good indication that some sort of rebuild or something is coming. Gorton was brought in by the New York Rangers specifically for the rebuild. Now, the good news is Gorton was brought in by the Rangers for a quick rebuild, very fast. And uh, whether it was impatience or a lot of difference of opinion and philosophy behind the scenes, sounds like more of the latter, Gorton was let go by the Rangers. But the ammo of Gorton is he can do things quick, not like 10, 15 years, like say the Edmonton Oilers or the Buffalo Sabres. We're talking about a quick rebuild here. So uh, those players are Carey Price, which we're doing now. Shea Weber, which of course he's retired now, he would be for prospects for somebody for teams that are trying to uh, get some more cap space. Petrie Gallagher, which we did. I'm not even going to do Nick Suzuki. To me, that would be just outlandish. <coughs> uh, Josh Anderson and Christian Dvorak. Yeah, everybody. A lot of players could be traded by the Montreal Canadiens if they're going to tear it down and rebuild it again. Um, the question would be, of course, should you trade Carey Price, even if it is a rebuild? I think a lot of that would have to come down, first of all, to Carey Price, which we're going to look at here because he has a no movement clause in his contract, does he not? Yes, full no movement clause. So, and out of respect for a, for a goaltender, Hall of Fame goaltender, they're not just going to throw him anywhere. He'll, he definitely would have a say on this deal. 
The return would probably not be as big as most Montreal Canadian fans would like, but getting losing the cap space and just turning their, your head to a different direction might be the right thing to do. Now, there also is a thought that you could keep him and help. he could help young players and young goaltenders coming up, and that's fine as long as he wants that. The question really will be, does Carey Price have a yearning for a cup? Because it certainly doesn't look like that's going to happen in Montreal anytime soon. Interesting. Either way, let me know in the comment section what you think. Uh, Montreal fans or fans in general, should they decide to keep him? He's 34 years old. He's making $10.5 million. He's got $10.5 on the cap. Uh, actual money, it drops quite a bit, which could help some teams, but for the most part, it doesn't really matter. It's the cap space that matters here. He'll be 38 by the time this is over, and then, of course, we have the injury concerns and all of those sort of things like that. Now, I think that for sure, this is not going to happen until until Carey Price can show that he is can get over whatever injuries he's had problems with. He just took some time off for his own mental health, and that's awesome. Um, so it'll take a while. I don't think this would happen right away, and it would be very emotional and very tough, no doubt about it. So let's look at the teams that I think would be interested. Some make sense, some maybe not so much. But one, the first one I'm going to, doesn't make sense on a lot of levels, but Vegas Golden Knights do things that don't make sense. Do they have cap space? No, not at all. They're waiting for Eichel to come in after that big trade that uh, with Buffalo. And um, the thing is, though, they let Flurry go to Chicago and kept Mr. Laner who's making $5 million for the next four years, and he's sort of struggling right now. Uh, I wonder if maybe there's question marks in Vegas's mind that is going to be the guy to take him there. And if Carey Price is available, I would not doubt at all that they would be called. Like, they are winning now, now, now. Now. Right, Vegas fans? Like, there's no such thing as tomorrow, really. It's now. And if Carey Price shows to be healthy. We saw what he can do last year in the playoffs, right? Like, he can, he basically carried Montreal into the finals. What would he do on this team with Eichel and Stone, Pacioretty, Carlson, Marcia Show, Smith, Peter Angelo? I mean, this is a world class, one of the greatest lineups assembled type team. In comes uh, Carey Price. I think they would be there, man. Okay, how do you make the cap room? Well, they they are they're it would it would take an awful lot, honestly. I mean, Robin Lehner, of course, would be going back, would be going to Montreal. He's got a moderate no movement clause. So what would what what does that look like? Five team no trade list. Now they would have to convince him to go to Montreal here. Uh, he's got to give them five teams. If he knows he's going to Montreal, he can just pick that as one of their teams and they can't trade him there and this is all over. But if they can convince him, you could go Laner. Uh, Dodonoff, which is basically doing them Vegas a favor and then pretty much everything that you have that's a pick or something for the next however long uh you, I, you don't have your first next year it'd be the first after that I even believe that is all is up in the air whether they can keep that or not uh let's see put it over here conditional pick okay that's can that's already a conditional pick so it'd have to be prospects it would have to be whatever prospects they have. Let's look at it. Um, and they really don't have any. Like, this would be so much. We don't have nothing. We're winning this year, and that's it. You get Lane. Montreal will get Laner. They can work with a guy, with somebody that he's a little younger. Uh, he's 30 years old. He's a little younger. 
He's only getting $5 million on the cap, but they're going to want like Jake LeCision, who is a good, young, solid player that's already played up in the lineup already. Um, one of their – Logan Thompson probably signed to an ELC. Uh, Brandon Bryson. I mean, just keep on going. Basically, they just have no more – it's just no more prospects in there. Just whatever you want, here you go. We're going for it this year. And then forget about having prospects for a long, long time. Would Vegas do that? I believe they probably would. I Do I think they should? Probably not. But I don't know if going the direction they're going is the best idea to begin with. Because somewhere down the road, this team is going to have nothing left in the pipeline and everybody's going to be old. But... If you're already doing it, why not do it? All right, Vegas fans, tell me what you think about that. Uh, the next one, the Edmonton Oilers. And I've, the Edmonton Oilers have been part of this deal, these sort of deals for a long time. I know every Edmonton Oilers fan, we have no cap space. You gotta, you're going to have to trade bodies away. Also, there's something else that could happen here. Montreal could retain a little bit, say $2 million or whatever the case may be of the salary in order to get the right deal going here. Um, first of all, Miko Koskinen would certainly be part of the deal. Now, he's only going to help you for one year. Uh, after that, that 10.5, maybe you can get it down to 9.5, is going to have to, you're going to have to find a way to trade players to get it off the books. Uh, but let's talk about it. If Edmonton is really trying now, they got McDavid, they have dry sidle. They have a great top six. Problem they're having is on defense. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do to fix this defense. I think they dropped the ball big time getting uh, Keith and signing Barry. Uh, these are all about poor defensive players right now. Keith used to be good, but he's not anymore. He's poor defensively now. Tyson Barry's poor defensively. Darnell Nurse is a good offensive guy, but he's not the greatest defensively either. Uh, Evan Bouchard is their best defenseman. So what's the best elixir for a defense that probably isn't going to be that great and a top six that will knock everybody off their tails with their offense that they have? Dry Settle, McDavid, Hyman, all, you know, Hopkins, Nugent Hopkins, Puya Harvey, great top six. How about a elite goaltender? And uh, so you move Koskinen, in. You move Barry. Make Barry part of the deal. Take Barry, Koskinen. in. That'll almost even up the space for this year. You'll have to work it, work it, work out the rest next year. Maybe bio Duncan Keith or something. And then prospects. You're gonna if you're gonna take if they're gonna take Barry from you, they don't need Barry. This is, they don't need Koskinen either. So really, you haven't given them anything yet. So the oil, so Montreal's like, okay, we're doing this to make the cap work, but now what are you actually going to give us? And I think it's going to take a crap load. Uh, I think they're going to be looking at Xavier Borgo, which may just stop the deal. He's crushing it in junior right now. He's French-Canadian, of course. Montreal would love to have a guy like that. Uh, he would like they're going to be looking for guys like that, quality prospects. Unless they can't find a deal worth it somewhere else, and then maybe you're getting lucky and you can throw them the first round pick. And uh, Ilya Konovalov, who is looking like a fantastic goaltender, um, which may be why the Oilers don't even do this at all, because. Konovalov, if they feel is going to be that good, he's 23 years old now. If you feel is they feel he's going to be a, an elite goaltender, then they're probably off of this deal completely. Now, from what I've heard, they do believe that, but he hasn't been putting be great numbers up in Bakersfield. Um, he looks like a really good goaltender, but it's questionable if he's an elite goaltender. So the question is, do you want to win right now? You can have Oliver Rodrigue who is also a young goaltender that's working his way up. He's also French-Canadian. Um, and maybe uh, somebody that's hurt right now, Dylan Holloway. Dylan Holloway, Oliver Rodrigue, first this year, and the two players I said, Barry. They're going to need a goaltender. Koskinen can work. 
while they're doing their rebuild. Something like that. Tell me what you think, Oilers fans. You got Carey Price. And we saw what Montreal can what he did in Montreal last year. Carried that team to the finals. What could he do with the team with McDavid, Dreisaitl, all of these guys like that? And then, I don't know, try to do something with the defense. But it's it's actually really tough to find a place for, for Price because of his contract and all that. Next, we have the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yes, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Having a fairly decent year, even though they've had a lot of COVID problems, injury problems, uh, Still, Jake Gunsel's out, Brian Rust is out, but they keep on winning. And I know they're going to rebuild, but I still think they're in win-now mode. So what better way to win now? And yes, I know there's going to be cap issues, but we'll look at that in a second. What, what better way to win now than have Carey Price as your goaltender? Carey Price on this team gives Pittsburgh a really good chance. A really good chance. I mean... He gave Montreal a really good chance last year. Montreal shouldn't even have been there. No way. You take an average goaltender, put him on the Montreal Canadiens, there's no way they make it to the finals last year. This team is not more than an average team. They got a more than an average system. Extremely well coached. Sidney Crosby is still there. Now, what are you going to have to do in return? Well, first of all, probably Montreal is going to have to retain on this. Uh... And, of course, Tristan Jari would almost certainly be going back, which would be a serviceable play for Montreal. Actually has some value here. Um, I can't see Chris Letang. The rest is going to be difficult in order to give something up, in all honesty. Maybe Brian Rust at $3.5 million. They retain a little bit, and... You know, basically every prospect Pittsburgh has. Boak with Sahorna. Uh, again, another French-Canadian here, pierre Olivier joseph I'm sure they'd be interested in him. Um, they actually have their first this year. Just throw everything they possibly can. Maybe Jason Zucker to make the cap work. It's a tough call because that's getting rid of a fair amount of offense out of Pittsburgh's lineup, and they're not really stacked with offense either. But... What do you think, guys? What do you think, Pittsburgh fans? Do you think Carey Price can bring you to the promised land? Or just forget about it. Just go with what you got. Because I don't think Pittsburgh, as it is right now, with Tristan Jari, as good as they are in the regular season, is going to be able to beat the Carolinas, the Tampa Bays. Stuff. They, maybe even with Price, they're not. But... They're far more likely to with Price than they would with Tristan Jari, I would say. Next. Okay, this one's a little different. It's the Los Angeles Kings. And yes, these are not win now. They're not going to win this year. <clears throat> but this is a this is a Kings team that has said they're no longer in a rebuild. This is a Kings team that I believe is going to be adding in the offseason more. They added Philip Deno. They're going to find their holes this year. They're going to, like, the, Ar Arthur Kaliev and uh, um, Rasmus Kupari are taking an extra step this year. They're going to assess where they think they're going to be, what they're going to be, the, what, where this lineup is at, and who where they need to get better in order to compete right away. I believe they're trying to win another one while Kopitar is up. Kopitar is 34 He's still got legs. He's still putting up great numbers. I think they, I do believe that they're going to add some free agents here. And Cal Peterson is not having a great year. And this is their guy. Quick is having a great year, but he's 35 years old. Is Quick, is, does Jonathan Quick give you the same opportunity as Carey Price does at this stage of his career? I don't think so. I know he's having a great season right now, but I, I don't see it. So I could see them I could see them possibly thinking about this. Quick also has a tendency to get injured, although he hasn't been injured for a while. Maybe they're off the table. Maybe they just run with what they have. However, if they have doubts about Cal Peterson, 
Carey Price, as long as he's healthy, and we've been talking about this through every all through the video, that this deal would a deal like this wouldn't happen until they see that he's able to show long stretch without with it without having knee problems or health problems at all. I think they could deal Cal Peterson. And the thing about here is they'd have even more young players than a lot of teams that would have to be part of this deal. Uh, I don't think it's going to be maybe Gabriel Velarde, uh, Cal Peterson, and a first-round pick or something like that. Um, Alex Turcott is not really lighting it up in the AHL right now. So maybe somebody like that. And they're going for it for the next three years. They do a deal like that. I'm not saying they will. I Maybe they keep on rolling with Quick. Quick struggled up until this year, and now he's having a great year. Is that going to continue? Or, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's actually a tough call. It's a tough call. I think if he's out there, L.A. will be on the phone, though. Let's take another look. Let's take a look at the last team that I have here. And that is the San Jose Sharks. And the reason why I have the San Jose Sharks here is because this is a team that really needs to kind of rebuild but can't. Um, let's look at their lineup here. They're playing with a lot better energy since Kane went out. I do believe Kane will probably be traded. I just don't think that – I think the old ways of Kane – will be too difficult to overcome within this dressing room. I think Kane's going to be – I actually think Kane is going to turn out to be fine. I'm going to do a video on Kane and where he might be traded as well. But they've got some young players like Gregory Noah coming up. Um, they're really trying hard to get him to be able to play in the top six. Jonathan Darlene is looking not bad. They're finding a few young players to trickle into an older lineup with Logan Couture. Uh, team of Myers still young. They got to sign Thomas Hurdle, and I do believe they will. They signed Thomas Hurdle. Barabanov is, you know, okay guy. And then it starts to really kind of be iffy after that. The thing is here with defense, they have Mario Ferrero. Burns isn't getting any younger. Carlson isn't getting any younger. But the thing is, they can't trade any of these contracts. They're almost untradeable contracts, which makes it extremely difficult to do any significant rebuild. So it's almost like they got to win now or nothing. And as these players get older, you can hope that eventually you'll be able to get rid of these contracts and maybe do a rebuild that you actually need to do. But if you do have to catch lightning in a bottle to have a chance, would Carey Price not be the guy, one of the guys that you would want? Carey Price can lead anyone, a team into the finals, as we saw with Montreal Canadiens. This team is probably better on paper than the Montreal Canadiens were last year. In fact, all of the teams that I'm talking about are better, are better on paper than the Montreal Canadiens were last year. But Carey Price is there. Carey Price might be able to take you to the promised land. Might as well give it a shot while you have no choice but to give it a shot because you can't rebuild in San Jose anyways, so you might as well be the best you can be. Who would you have in return? Um, James Reimer is putting one heck of a season up, um, which may even derail any chance of it anyways. They may just keep on going with James Reimer, see if he can keep this up. However, through his whole career, he hasn't shown the kind of consistency, the price, and the level of, of, of a level in the playoffs that Price has. Like, he is almost unstoppable. I don't see Reimer doing that, but he could go back. Yes, cap problem. So, the aforementioned Evander Kane. Evander Kane would help, would solve the cap problems. You got Reimer. Evander Kane's 30 years old. I know it's not really a rebuild piece, but he is younger. And... You could throw some more in there. San Jose could throw Scott Reedy, who's doing well in the minors right now. Uh, Nick Merkley. Uh, defense also. There's a Merkley in, on defense here that I think Ryan Merkley could be part of the deal. That would be hard to give up. I wouldn't want to give him up. But uh, 
uh, draft picks, what have you, because you're going for it now anyways, right? What's the point? Seriously, what's the point for San Jose? When they got a rebuild, it's going to be a burn down, crash it down rebuild. Anyways, no matter what. So you could give up the draft picks. They could take Kane. You can even work a three-way trade here. Montreal gets Kane, moves him for a whole bunch of draft picks and stuff like that as well. Now, is anybody going to take Kane at the moment? Probably not. You're right. I know you're all thinking that. But nobody's taking Patrick Law or Patrick Law, uh, Carey Price right now either. His injury issues are pro- they're they're going to want to see him go at least to the end of the year without an injury problem. Evander Kane's going to have to go at least to the end of the year without issues going to casinos or whatever his issues may be. They, he's going to have to paint a new Kane to the rest of the NHL. Anyways, so both of these teams they need they're going to need that time anyways. Maybe an off season deal. Uh, but I think San Jose would be in there. I think I think Wilson would be on the phone to give it a shot. Tell me what you think, boys and girls. Price, if you're a Canadiens fan, do you keep them? Do you trade them? All the teams I talked about, I'm going to send this out to your lands, and you can tell me what you think about getting Mr. Price between the pipes or you. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Uh, if you like the four major sports and, and uh, teams in those four major sports, you'll like the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Come see me on my show, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, 3.30 to 5.30 weekdays. Interactive. Talk about whatever you want, NHL. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Okay. Bye.